Welcome and good evening. Welcome. On behalf of WO, welcome to this webinar on capsule endoscopy. As you may know, capsule endoscopy is a 20 years anniversary. It's my pleasure to introduce my co-director, Dr. Anmar Borges and Dr. Cristina Carretero, one from Brazil, the other from Spain. And I'm Jean-François Ré from France and past president of WO. Capsule endoscopy is a very important, but uh, for 20 years, we have a question about the safety and especially about impaction. We know the number of complications, the number of impactions is very low, but uh, it's also very important for the patient to know now we have a, a tool able to diagnose, predict the impaction. And it's why this uh, course is focused on the patency capsule. We have a lot of uh, discussion about, about this patency capsule, but uh, I'm sure with the various speaker, Dr. Spada, Sidhu, Caretero, and Bogus, we could try to answer to your question. And finally, uh, this uh, webinar is interactive. So if you have any question, you could use the Q and R and we answer to your question. So now we start with the first speaker. The first speaker, it's uh, Cristiano Spada, a friend from Italy, and uh, he will talk about the you know, patency capsule, the technique. Cristiano, it's yours. Okay, so good afternoon. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with you. And I would like first uh, to thank uh, Professor Ray, uh, Admar and Christina for this kind invitation. So uh, we will deal with patency capsule tonight. And uh, uh, if uh, as was mentioned in Professor Ray in the introduction, uh, uh, we deal with uh, a complication of capsule endoscopy and mainly with the problem of retention. So if you see here, we have a tight structure and uh, probably I will not, I would not feel comfortable to perform a video capsule endoscopy in a, a, a case in a patient uh, with such a, a tight structure. Uh, but we have a, a, a test that is uh, the performed by a capsule that is the patency capsule that is uh, uh, intended to uh, verify the functional patency of the small bowel. When we started with the patency capsule, probably now 18, 17 years back, we uh, uh, thought that the patency capsule was able to detect stricture. But uh, uh, finally, we understood that capsule endoscopy, the patency capsule uh, uh, is not to verify uh, to, and to detect stricture, but uh, it's very effective uh, to um, verify the functional patency of the small bowel. And this is uh, uh, the system that uh, is available now, we have uh, uh, the patency capsule that has the same dimension of a standard uh, uh, video capsule and uh, video capsule. And uh, we also have uh, the patency scanner. And in fact, uh, the patency scanner detects the presence of the patency capsule uh, by means of radio frequency technology. Because if you see inside of the capsule, uh, there is this uh, radio frequency tag that uh, transmits signals uh, to uh, the scanner. And so the scanner is able to uh, uh, verify the presence of uh, the uh, patency capsule within uh, the GI tract. 
This is a dissolvable capsule. And in fact, the body is made by lactose. And we also have 10% of barium. So it's possible to uh, locate the capsule uh, using a play abdominal film or a, um, a CT, tomo, uh, CT scan. And we will see when we use uh, one, uh, one the other. So in both the uh, domes of the capsule, uh, you see that there is this window and uh, uh, through this uh, uh, exposed window, the GI fluids uh, uh, comes uh, in contact with the uh, timer plugs and where the dissolution process starts. And if the capsule is not excreted during the time, uh, the dissolution process uh, involves all the capsule and then the capsule get dissolved. Uh, the capsule stays intact for a, uh, about 30 hours. And after 30 hours, uh, it starts the uh, disintegration process. And, uh, um, and we deal with the, with the patency capsule. So when we ask, uh, and we won't prove the functional patency of uh, the GI tract of the small bowel, uh, we ask patient uh, to not uh, drink liquid. And so to stay with uh, uh, liquid diet the, the day, since the day before, and then, uh, Nine, uh, um, uh, from 10 p.m. And then in the morning of the ingestion, they simply they come to the hospital, uh, to the clinic, uh, to, and uh, uh, have the capsule ingestion. And then if the capsule is not excreted uh, within uh, 40 uh, on day two, then we scan uh, the, uh, the, the cap we scan the patient. And if uh, the patent, if the capsule is inside the GI tract, we will see what uh, we uh, do. And what about uh, if the capsule is excreted? Well, it's very important. It's extremely important to have clear uh, what is a, an intact capsule. Because sometimes uh, patients get confused about what is intact and what is not intact. And in fact, in my experience, I always ask patients to uh, come to the hospital with the capsule, just to be sure and, and to see personally uh, what's the status of the uh, capsule. So by definition, we consider a, 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 an intact capsule when the body of the capsule is intact. Even if we have some dissolution process that starts uh, from uh, uh, the plug, well, actually, when the body is intact, we define this capsule as an intact capsule. And so we confirm the patency of the small bowel. On the other side, when the um, uh, dissolution process involves also the body of the capsule, then it means uh, that the patency, uh, the patency of the small bowel cannot be uh, confirmed. But, uh, uh, well, this is the, say, the, the case when the capsule is excreted, and so we can confirm uh, the, uh, the dissolution process and the, if the patency is confirmed or the uh, patency of the small bowel is not uh, uh, confirmed. So the first case we can do safely the video capsule endoscopy. In the uh, uh, latter case, uh, we cannot do a, a capsule endoscopy. But how, when the capsule is not excreted, uh, it could be in the colon. And so it could happen that we have a patency the small bowel of the small bowel, but the capsule is still in the colon and can stay for in the colon even for days. So it's important for us to properly locate 
the, the capsule inside the, the GI tract. And we can use a plain abdominal film, very low dose of uh, radiation, or we can also use a CT scan and uh, uh, in order to better locate the capsule within the GI tract. Well, uh, this is, I think, an important uh, uh, algorithm of uh, 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 the patency capsule procedure. Well, if the capsule is excreted, no problem. Uh, we, we see the capsule and we see the, uh, the, if it's intact or not. But when the capsule is after 30, 35 hours inside the body, how we can, what test we can use to properly locate uh, the uh, capsule, uh, the patency capsule. You see here that if the capsule is in the, in the GI tract, uh, then we have different option that comes from plain abdominal film to a CT scan, but which test we should use. And if we have a case like this one, well, it's very difficult to locate this capsule. Well, this could be in the colon, but also it could be in the small bowel. So I like very much this approach. Uh, Rina is with us, uh, and so probably uh, uh, after my, in, during the uh, question and answer section, he can provide us with even more information about this. Well, this uh, uh, group from UK um, developed a new algorithm and with, uh, uh, they call the targeted a computer CT protocol. Well, they start doing a low dose scout of the abdomen that is comparable with the plain abdominal film. And then uh, starting from this uh, scout, they target the CT scan where the capsule, the patency capsule is located. And in fact, what happens in the real life it's, is that it's very difficult sometime to locate properly the capsule, the patency capsule within the, the GI tract. You see that over more than 200 uh, um, uh, patients, they were able properly to locate the capsule only in a minority, 59. So it's almost, it's about 20, 25% of the cases. But actually, if we use this protocol, we, prob we can properly locate the capsule within the GI tract. So first the scout of the abdomen and then target our CT scan in the area of uh, the, uh, where is located the patency capsule. And in fact, using this protocol, the prediction, uh, the accuracy to predict the patent small bowel lumen is extremely high, 99%. So almost we can properly evaluate the patency and we properly locate the, call, the patency capsule in all our patients. So I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Christian. I think we will keep the question for the end of this webinar. So the next speaker, it's uh, Mrs. Rena Sidhu from UK, Patency Capsule, why and when? Please. Thank you very much uh, for the invite and introduction. So for the next 10 minutes, I'll give you an introduction. We'll talk about patency, when it is indicated, I'll share with you the literature using patency, and we'll also touch on about false positives and negatives. You've already heard an excellent introduction from Cristiano on how the patency capsule works and the fact that he has two windows on either side. So what is the factor that we're worried about? Well, capsule endoscopy retention is defined as non-passage of the capsule for at least two weeks, requiring targeted medical, endoscopic, or surgical intervention. And why do we worry? Because this may lead to surgery for a problem that otherwise would be treated medically, such as Crohn's disease or NSAID enteropathy. Prevention is always better than cure, and the risks for capsule retention 
including those who have obstructive symptoms, such as abdominal pain, bloating or vomiting, Crohn's disease, particularly the penetrating phenotype, and those with an elevated CRP. Patients who've had a previous small bowel resection, small bowel ischemia, or radiation involving the small bowel field, or surreptitious use of NSAID ingestion for more than two years are at risk of small bowel strictures that may be asymptomatic. How do we define this risk? Well, we know the ECHO ESCAR guidelines tells us that the risk of retention in suspected Crohn's is between 1.4 to 2.6%, and in established Crohn's disease is up to 13%. In patients who are known to have strictures on radiology, this goes up to 21%. And these figures are similar to the meta-analyses published in GIE. And in obscure bleeding, the risk is between 1.2 to 2%. And for patients with abdominal pain and diarrhea, it's approximately 2.2%. I'd like now to share with you a couple of slides with regards to the literature. This landmark study by Lee, published in 2008, looked at 1,000 patients of all comers and all indications they had a retention rate of 1.4%. And out of the 14 patients, 11 of them had NSAIDs, and three of them were, were found to have tumours. But 13 out of the 14 of them had had a normal barium study precapsule, and all of them were asymptomatic. And 13 patients required surgery. And these studies are in keeping with that done by Rhonda Notti, which also stressed that you cannot rely on radiology to ensure that the capsule will pass through. Let's look at real life series of patency capsule. The first one done by Uri Kopilov looked at 1600 patients and the rate of symptomatic retention was 1.2%. Risk factors identified included previous surgery, previous small bowel obstruction, inflammatory bowel disease and NSAIDs. In 13%, 13 patients, they resolve spontaneously, but one required surgery, five steroids, and one in fact was an esophagus, stressing the need to ensure patients have had a gastroscopy. The other study by Pexato, although re retrospective, looked at 369 patients. They also included cases where patients had had small bowel imaging showing strictures. And 2.5% had self-limiting occlusive symptoms. Both these studies stress that the risk factors of occlusive symptoms, IBD, NSAIDs, and if those who had imaging showing strictures are likely to have a positive capsule, or patency capsule at 30 hours. Another study to look at is this Japanese series. It was over a thousand patients and in half of them, the patency was okay. But in the other half, they needed to use radiology to confirm the location of the patency capsule. But despite that, retention occurred in five cases. Those were in patients who had established Crohn's disease and in obscure GI bleeding. And this is because the location of the patency capsule had been misinterpreted to be in the wrong place. And this, the authors concluded that while it's really helpful, patency can assure that small bowel retention does not occur, but when you use radiology, it's important that its location is appropriately delineated. While we've talked about false negatives, what about false positives? In this series, um, they included usual patients with risk factors of Crohn's disease, stenosis on imaging and previous abdominal surgery. And the sensitivity was 94% and a specificity of 97%. And the only clinical factor related to false positive cases was constipation. This is rare, but something to bear in mind. And this brings me nicely to introduce the Sheffield protocol, which Cristiano already has done. In Sheffield where I work, we do 800 capsules a year, so a large volume. And we came up with this novel protocol where patients would swallow the patency capsule at home at eight in the morning. They would come to hospital the following day at two. And this is all a nurse led protocol where the nurse does the patency scanner. And if it flashes blue, they then get sent down for a scalp view, which is similar to a plain foam 
before a limited CT scan is done. Now, Christiane has already highlighted that we had a high sensitivity and specificity. Now, what about the radiation dose, you might ask? Well, the radiation dose for a scout view is less than that of a plain X-ray. And for a limited CT scan, the radiation is between 0.8 to 1.4 millisievert. And if you compare that to a full CT, that's 8 millisievert. So this protocol does involve a little bit of radiation, but it's about the balance and risks and getting the location of the patency capsule correct. I'd also like to highlight a study that's looked at cost effectiveness and whether we should be doing so with patency. It's a theoretical comparison and it divided patients into scenario A, where all patients were selected carefully for patency followed by capsule. Scenario B, where all patients had a patency followed by capsule and scenario C, where no one had a patency and all went straight for capsule. And as expected, it was most cost effective to carefully select patients for patency prior to capsule endoscopy. I'd also like to highlight two problems that can occur with patency capsule. And we reported one of them, and it's this of premature dissolution. We had five cases where when we scanned the patients on the ward, the patency scanner flashed blue, but when we sent them down for a scalp view, no patency capsule was seen. But if you look at the X-ray in the top corner, you can see there's multiple metallic fragments on a patient's X-ray or the scalp view. And that's because they've also had previous surgery in surgical clips, and it's hard to tell that from the radio frequency tag. We then send the patient back up to the ward, and again, the patency scanner flashed blue, suggesting that the radio frequency tag is definitely within the patient. So I would suggest do beware, although this is rare, it can occur. You may then wish to either repeat the study or think about an alternative modality. The second complication that can occur is small bowel perforation. So in this little case of a 74 year old man who had pain, patency capsule was performed. 18 hours after he had severity of abdominal pain that increased due to peritonitis and perforation and the patient needed emergency ileocolic resection. The capsule was retrieved and histology was consistent with Crohn's disease. I'd now like to share with you two videos. So this is uh, a case of a patient. You can see here that the patency shell is visible and is stuck in front of a stricture. And this turned out to be adenocarcinoma on the biopsies. This is another case of a patient who took NSAIDs surreptitiously, meaning not on prescription, but the patient did not declare this, so they did not have a patency capsule, and hence the capsule was stuck in front of this diaphragmatic-like stricture. And with that, we then had to do double balloon endoscopy to retrieve the capsule with a Roth net. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, do screen for obstructive symptoms and risk factors, which is the why and the when. Do take appropriate consent, including that they may have symptomatic um, symptoms after the patency capsule. Use patency capsule in high-risk groups, even if the radiology shows no strictures. And do certainly use radiology to help management, but accurate localization is key. And also be aware of premature dissolution of the patency capsule although this is rare. Thank you. Thank you for his very nice talk. The, the next speaker is uh, Cristiana Carretero from Spain, and uh, the talk is Patency Capsule in Crohn Disease. Please, Cristiana. Uh, good night. It's a great pleasure to be here with all of you and especially with my capsule colleagues who are also very good friends. We have had two wonderful presentations so far, and now I think it's time to go a little bit uh, deeper into one specific situation, and this is Crohn's disease. If I put Crohn's and capsule in the same sentence, I'm sure that you, the first thing that comes to your mind is retention. And maybe that's the reason 
why you're not performing capsule in so many Crohn's patients. But the good news is that it's not always true. In fact, if you have a patient with a su suspected Crohn's with no obstructive symptoms or non-stenosis and no history of small bowel resection, the risk of capsule retention is 1.6%, which is really similar to the risk of retention that we have in obscure GA bleeding patients. Fast forward to 2020, this meta-analysis showed the retention rate in Crohn's disease. And as you can see, the overall retention rate is around 3%, but it's a little bit different if we split the patients into suspected Crohn's and established Crohn's. In suspected Crohn's disease, the retention rate is around 2% and established Crohn's disease is uh, 4%. But is there any way that we can improve this retention rate? Absolutely, we can decrease the risk if uh, we perform the capsule uh, only, uh, sorry, if we perform the patency capsule for a specific patients. In fact, the relative risk of um, retention in established Crohn's disease is 3.35 if we compare it to suspected Crohn's. And we can decrease this rate if we perform a small bowel study focused specially, uh, specifically, sorry, for the detection for narrowing and strictures. So we can decrease the risk from 4.63 to 2.75 if a small bowel study is negative. And how can we do this small bowel study? We can do a small bowel follow through, but it underestimates the presence of stenosis we can do an MRE, but it overestimates the risk of stenosis. And in fact, there are some studies that show that if we decide whether to perform the capsule or not based only on the MRE findings, we would only do uh, half of uh, the capsules. So the other option is to go for patency capsule. Uh, uh, it has been said that it evaluates the intestinal functional patency, but it's superior regarding the functional patency, and it minimizes the risk of capsule retention. So it seems that the best way to go is to use the patency capsule. And when should we do it? We can use either of these two strategies. We can do a selective strategy where we uh, offer the patency capsule for patients who have obstructive symptoms or non-stenosis, or we can do an all-in strategy offering the patency capsule for all Crohn's patients. In this study, they included 342 patients, 180 went for the selective strategy, and of them, 81 had uh, obstructive symptoms, so they were offered the patency capsule. 56 of them were clear for the video capsule endoscopy. So they finally performed 155 video capsules. It means 86% of the patients went for capsule and they had a retention rate of 1.3%. They had two retentions. The other arm included 162 patients in the all-in strategy. So obviously they performed 162 patient patency capsules and 127 were cleared for uh, the video capsule, meaning that they perform this 78% uh, of patients went for video capsule and they had 1.6% of retentions, which is very similar to the other arm and the differences were not uh, statistically significant. So using the selective or the all-in strategy, they have this, a similar retention rate. But if we do the selective strategy, we will do more capsules, which will improve the diagnostic yield. And we will do less patency capsules, will we be uh, less expensive? And what happened to those patients who had patency, uh, positive patency studies? They had 81 positive patency studies. 63 of them went uh, directly to cross-sectional studies, but in 18 patients, they decided to go for the capsule despite the patency capsule results. But 14 of these 18 patients went 
firstly to do capsule and then to a cross-sectional study. Fortunately, they had no retentions and the cross-sectional studies uh, didn't show any strictures. And in the other arm, four patients underwent only capsule and they had two symptomatic retentions. So uh, the proposed flowchart would be if you have a patient with established Crohn's disease and obstructive symptoms or non-stenosis, then I would recommend to do a cross-sectional study. And if you find a long stricture or a peristenotic dilatation of three centimeters or more, or you have more than two peristenotic dilatations or multiple stenosis or bulky tumors, then you should stop here and don't do any capsule. But if you don't have any of them, I would propose to go for patency capsule. So finally, the take home messages would be, try to use the patency capsule to study the small bowel, the small bowel patency. Use a selective strategy only when patients uh, have symptoms or uh, previous surgery. And if you have a positive patency capsule, then I would recommend to go for a cross-sectional study. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for your nice talk. So last presentation, Patency Capsule versus CT or MRI by Admar Borges from Brazil. Admar, my friend. Uh, uh, hello, thank you, the, the audience, for being virtually with us at this new uh, project of WU. Thank you to the presenters. Well, Cross-sectional imaging of Pathis capsule to predict capsule retention. This is the, the question. Pathis capsule, we can see at this this cross-sectional at this CT, and the, the, the cross-sectional image in this, in this two exam with the stenosis and the, a pre-stenotic dilation. Capsule retention, it's, it's uh, in the X-ray, you can see just like a, a, a point sun type. Uh, capsule retention, it's, a, it's a, a problem that when happen, if you, if you are, if the patient is lucky, they can have the capsule removed by, by double balloon, Enteroscopy. And uh, see, we can see the, the tight stenosis, the Crohn's disease, and the caps, the retained caps, the after two years. Uh, there is a paucity of publication regarding this topic. Data are limited. Uh, uh, Patis capsules has low radiation and uh, low cost is repeatable uh, and conversely uh, CT, E and MRE uh, they are widely available and reimbursable. I will I will show this to you. Thus, I bring to you this renowned uh, uh, technical technical review, and uh, I think I will I bring to your attention a couple of uh, great uh, studies. We learn from these these uh, renowned guideline that, uh, that uh, cross-sectional imaging frequently overestimates the risk 
of a structure. Uh, uh, Cross-sectional image is marked in less accurate in the evaluation of function of small bowel patency and uh, prevents wider use of capsule endoscopy. Based on CTE, not on PC, at least 40% uh, of patients would not have undergone capsule endoscopy. I have included this table because it gives us the most predictive find of PC retention. Uh, the cor uh, correlated with PC retention, the most uh, predictive finding is number of pre-stenotic dilation and stenosis length. This article concludes that low specificity and positive predictive value, value of MRE in predictive PC retention and the patient with positive MRE prediction should undergo PC before capsule endoscopy. Here is a negative cross-sectional imaging for stenosis in high-risk patient reassuring before capsule endoscopy. This, this, this article will help us to answer this question when they say that PC seems to be more effective than the small bowel cross-sectional image in preventing capsule retention in patients of high risk of this complication. Further, uh, uh, Lara had to have prospective comparative studies are needed. A negative small bowel cross image does not appear to be reassuring, whereas a negative PC may help to reclassify high risk patient to a, a lower risk ca category. And the uh, small bowel cross section for identify intestinal st structure lacks sensitivity and the specificity to evaluate gastrointestinal tract patency. Now, a uh, uh, practical tip for the fellows, do not wait long to perform capsule endoscopy after patent capsule. The stenosis can get Tighter. Thank you for the attention. Thank you. Thank you, Anmar. So now we have time for a question. Perhaps we could start with uh, our colleague. Do you have any question for this webinar? Cristiano? Christiana? Reina, Anma. Well, uh, may I ask you a question? Please. Uh, do you recommend to do a specific report for patency capsule? Do you usually do it? Cristiano, special well, species. Yeah, well, um, usually we do. And when we perform patency capsule and video capsule endoscopy, usually we, in, uh, let's say, high-risk patients, we usually confirm in the report that um, the capsule endoscopy was performed after um, uh, the patency capsule. In case the capsule, the patency capsule get dissolved or the small bowel patency is not confirmed, in any case, we provide the patient with a report. Thank you. I, we have, uh, 
We have a question. We have a question for the audience. May I? Please, please, go ahead. Yes, we, we have a question for the audience. Uh, are you supposed to give patency capsule to anyone who has lactose intolerance or allergy? And the same uh, uh, question, is the patency scan 100% sensitive? Cristiano? Well, uh, the um, question about uh, the um, uh, lactose intolerance, well, actually, the amount of, uh, um, of lactose in, in the uh, patency capsule is extremely low. And uh, frankly speaking, uh, I do not consider uh, me personally a contraindication for patients uh, who have uh, lactose intolerance. I don't know the other speakers, uh, but uh, I, I use uh, a patency capsule also in this group of patients. And uh, the question about the scanner, well, uh, is 100% uh, sensitive? Well, it depends what we define uh, uh, for sensitive, I mean, if you um, want to, to to say if the capsule uh, is in the body, in, is in the GI tract or not, is uh, it's um, I don't know. I don't have any uh, uh, exact number in terms of sensitivity, but it's is 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 a, is a sensitive. It's quite uh, uh, effective. Well, the problem is that uh, it's not able to locate properly. The, cap, the patency capsule within the GI tract. So we don't know if the capsule is in the small bowel or the colon. And this is why I prefer the Sheffield protocol. Okay. I would agree, uh, Cristiano, that amount of lactose is only a few grams. And I think some patients very specifically, they inquire about this and we declare that it's only a few grams and it shouldn't affect them at all but some patients you know, feel that they don't want to take that risk and we can't stop them. But really it's negligible, uh, the effect. Uh, and with regards to the other question, I, I don't know of any studies that have looked at the scanner on its own in terms of sensitivity. And I think I would just caution uh, the audience that the only thing that can go wrong with the protocol is that if there's premature dissolution of the actual capsule itself. Uh, I have a question from the audience, from you, Reina. Uh, is it necessary to do any preparation the day before ingestion of patency, or do you use any protocol? Or, or so in Sheffield, or... we don't. No. We don't use any protocol. We don't fast the patient or anything like that, uh, because they're simply uh, swallowing the patency, and they just swallow at 8 in the morning, so no preparation at all. And Rina, I have a question for you. And do you use uh, routinely the scanner or if the capsule, the patency capsule is not excreted, uh, then you go directly to your uh, Sheffield protocol? So we always use the scanner uh, in all cases. Uh, and, and then we follow down with the scalp view and uh, you know the limited CT scan. I think the other thing to educate the audience as well is in patients who've got uh, stoma, who is an, which is an ileostomy. If the patency capsule scanner detects the capsule, check the bag. If the capsule is not in the bag, it's definitely in the small bowel. It's no point doing a scalp view. We, we don't do that because it's definitely retained in the small bowel. Yeah. Uh, I have also a question from the audience. Are you using prokinetic with a patency capsule? And how long you keep a patient without uh, food or drink before having a patency? No protocol. Prokinetic, who is using prokinetic? No, I don't use prokinetics. Okay. I don't use it. Yeah. No, we don't do in Sheffield, and patients can eat and drink normally. Yeah, yeah. I not agree. Fasted. Okay, they 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 swallow the caps patency capsule and then they leave normally. It's okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. 
Uh, I have a question, but I think it's different from one country to a country. How expensive the patency capsule? Uh, in France, it costs nothing because we, we get a, a free patency capsule for, I think, 10 uh, normal capsules. So when my, when my hospital buy 10 capsules, they get one patency free of charge. It is the same in, in Italy? No, no, we have to pay for <laughs> We have to pay for <laughs> for patency capsule, unfortunately. Uh, well, it's not very expensive. I don't know exactly is, uh, the price of the patency capsule, but it's at all is not as expensive as video capsule endoscopy. It's uh, much less expensive than a, a video capsule endoscopy. I think it's around 100 euros, more or less. In yeah. Spain. In, in Spain. Italy, Italy is the Brazil. same, more or less is the same. In Brazil, I'd say it's about 20% of the price, the capsule endoscopy price. Quite expensive, quite expensive. Yeah, and in the UK it's the same, and there's no special deal, buy 10, get one free. Okay, <laughs> so we, we make a good deal in France. Yeah, yeah. you did a great job. Yeah. Uh, 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 about the, the previous question, I advise that prokinetomy in this patient could be, be it's not, it's not, it's, uh, it's not indicated because it can, the patient may have a, a stenosis and prokinetomy with the 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 capsule the patient's capsule can in fact it can uh, worsen the the patient pain or something like that. Uh, another question from the audience: Is it necessary to do patency if a dedicated MR small bowel show no structural disease? Admar. Yeah. Yes, it depends. Yes, depends on the the what the MRI what what it show the finding of the cross sectional. It depends if if there are long stenosis, if there are pre oh. Dilation, stenosis, predilation. It's your line is uh, loosey. Can you can you hear me? No, yes. Oh yeah, I, I was I was saying that uh, it depends on the cross sectional image finding. If uh, if you have for example, uh, long stenosis. If if there are if if there are predilation, uh, stenosis predilation. If there are uh, more than one stenosis, in fact, in this situation, we can uh, there is one um, algorithm for that. We can uh, we we should we in fact we have to to do pay this capsule okay i have a question for for uh, christiana uh, a colleague has a question could you use patency in over pathology beside Crohn disease yes uh, i would recommend to use the patency in any patient that uh, you suspect that can have stricters, maybe because of small bowel radiation. If you have obstructive symptoms or previous small bowel surgery, I would recommend to, to try first with a patency capsule. And another question, you know, uh, is it a place for patency capsule in patients with past GI small bowel surgery, when a patient has surgery? Yeah. I would say the same is the same situation. You have uh, a little bit uh, a high risk for retention, so I would definitely go for small uh, for patency capsule. Uh, we have a suggestion. Uh, has Bizac Codili 
uh, increase the colon motility, uh, a colleague suggests to use bisacodyl for uh, a patency capsule in order to excrete the patency capsule uh, more fast. Do you use it, Luciano? No. 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 Uh, we don't use uh, stimulants uh, to improve the capsule excretion. Christiana? No, we don't use it at all. Reina? I would also, we don't use it. I would also add that if you do then use prokinetics and even if the patency capsule comes out of the patient, you then need to examine uh, what the capsule looks like, the points which Cristiano covered in his talk uh, to make sure that it's not disintegrated. And I think it complicates the situation would be my uh, humble opinion. So a strong no. Yeah. We have a question from uh, 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 Rome Utaba. How many, how many of you experienced retained capsule in spite of following the protocol described? Cristiano? Yeah, well, uh, um, frankly speaking, I, I didn't experience any retention of period capsule endoscopy after a, a patency capsule. Uh, this is not exactly what is reported by literature where uh, some retention of video capsule endoscopy are mm, reported, but in my personal experience, uh, I didn't have any kind, any uh, case of capsule, video capsule retention after a patency capsule. Thank you. Uh, same question, you know, how many of you face medical legal issue in patient with retained capsule? Have you been sued? Personally, I never have a problem. No, me, I, me, I remove me too. the enteroscopy. Me, me too, I never had problem. We, of course, including the, in the, in the consent, uh, the risk of retention and uh, we properly define the retention as uh, Rina was uh, mentioning because sometimes patients uh, get anxious because uh, they don't see the capsule after a couple of days. That could be absolutely normal. And, uh, and uh, up to now, I didn't have any uh, problems, medical legal problems. And, uh, Cross your finger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christiana, no problem in Spain? No problems, fortunately. Uh, Rina in the UK? So the, we, in our series as well, we reported that the only problem we've occurred is when the uh, CT scan was misinterpreted by a non-GI specialist radiologist. And this is because there was a significant stricture and a pre synotic dilatation of about eight centimeters of the small bowel and they thought it was the colon because it's full of feces. Um, so I think, you know, accurate localization on any protocol is key. And as Cristiano mentioned, consenting is really important. And I, I always tell patients, the patency capsule is the same size as a real capsule. So it gives us assurance as best, but in life, there's no 100% guarantees. Okay. Anma, no problem? No, no, no problem so far. Okay, so far. Uh, I just have a question. Uh, one colleague asked, what is the difference between patency and video capsule? The, the difference is huge because the patency has been shown today very nicely. Uh, the uh, video capsule uh, is uh, totally different because they are uh, recording, they have a light, uh, and it's very, very, very tough. It's a very expensive. A piece of a device. Uh, and I look about, uh, yes, one question. H how many, what is the percentage of patients with a patency stay in their abdomen, small or large bowel, after 30 hours, regardless of pathology? Are you worried about the patency after 30 hours? No, personally, no, because uh, the dissolution process uh, starts around uh, 30 hours. And uh, uh, so if uh, the capsule stays in the small bowel because there is a stricture, then uh, 
it gets dissolved after a few hours. And so I don't have any, any concern about the presence of the capsule in the, the small bowel. And if it's in the colon, well, no problem at all. I mean, uh, there is no problem of patency capsule staying in the column. I don't know if also for the other is the same. We know. So as I demonstrated in my talk, there can be symptomatic retention of the patency capsule as well, but that's only short lived. And thereafter, it should completely dissolve as Cristiano mentioned. And I showed in my video as well, you can see the empty shell uh, of the patency capsule. And in the colon, not, not an issue. Cristiano? Yeah, I agree. We haven't had any issue with that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so all the, the protocol, the studies, they, they have been done with 30 hours. And uh, I, I think we have to follow what is written, 30 hours, not 24. OK. So do we have any speaker? Do you have any comment, any message, Cristiano? Well, uh, just uh, to be clear, well, there is no need. Uh, Cristina and Rina were mentioning in, their, in, uh, in the presentation, there is no need to test all our patients with, with patency capsule. Uh, because the, in general, the risk of retention is very low. And so we should properly, has also the uh, guidelines suggest uh, is to properly select patients uh, for patency capsule. And these usually are high risk patients with symptoms, obstructive symptoms, previous surgeries, NSAID users or Crohn's disease patients. So I think this is important because it's, uh, it's a no sense to test all our patients uh, with patency capsule. I don't know if also Christina and Reno uh, agree on this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We have to select the patient uh, and select and follow the, the guideline because we cannot do a patency. It's not, done, it's not for every, every exam. It's for, for very special cases. And it's not cost effective to do patency in everybody either. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, we are coming at the end of this webinar. Uh, on behalf of WO, I really thanks Cristiano, Cristiana, Rena, and Anma. It was a nice uh, evening in Europe, afternoon in Brazil. And uh, we look to see you next year in uh, Kyoto, because don't forget next year, I hope, the pandemic will be over and you could, we could make for the third World Congress of a Digestive Endoscopy in Kyoto, Japan. Good afternoon, good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.